Oh, it's good to see ya. We got a few days left in the year to trade. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Wednesday, December 27th. And since New Year's or Christmas did not fall on Thursday, we're going to be doing my live streaming event tomorrow. Woohoo! <laughs> I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my lovely co host, Taylor. We're there for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, talking to you, our viewers, about tickers they want us to look at. I share tickers with you all week. This gives you a chance to bring us your hot tickers, and we'll share them with everybody. I'll go over the information. Taylor will go over the charts, and we'll give you two opinions. Now, if you really want your ticker looked at, I can only cover so many in that amount of time. So get it in there early. I mean before 4 o'clock. You can do it. I put up a placeholder for the video around lunchtime. Drop the ticker in there. First come, first served, and it gives me more time to go over the information for you. So it's a win-win situation. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, tomorrow, Thursday. Be there. I'll be looking for you. So what we do on this show is basically I just share my due diligence with you on hot OTC and penny stocks. This is any stock under 5 bucks on any market. And I'm looking for stocks that can make us some money. Now, I'm primarily focused in on the charts. However, the news and the filings do come into play. But it seems to me a hot chart makes all the difference. So I'm looking for a chart that has heat, that's ready to run, a campfire that's already got a fire burning. The filings, the press releases, this is just extra wood you're going to throw on the fire. How big is the fire going to get if it's not burning? You got hot news on a cold campfire, it's not going to do a lot. So I'm looking at the campfire first. I look for volume coming in. I look for a breakout setup, the price ready to cut through a strong SMA. I look for a strong run for a long time. When I find a chart that has heat, then I'll take the time to go rummaging around through those press releases and filings. And not just today's. When you have a hot chart, a hot campfire, how big does that piece of news have to be? It doesn't. It doesn't even have to be fresh. An old, stale piece of wood will still burn. So look over the last 30 days, press releases and filings. See if you see anything still in place, something that still has potential, something that has heat. Throw that lumber on that hot chart, and what do you get? A hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks we're checking out. And I've got three fours today. First one we're going to take a look at is BEGI, Black Star Enterprise Group. She's had some big pieces of news come out here in the last couple of months. The biggest probably was on October 24th. She has not stopped running since then. That piece of news came out. She was at 0003. You can see we are now at 006. That is over 2,000% runs. So obviously it's not a breakout chart. Not by any means. It is a continuation, solid growth chart. She found herself a channel, has been riding that channel all the way up for a while, and right now she is at the bottom of the channel. So you could specifically call this a buy the dip if you like what I'm going to share with you. Now the company just got their patent today, or at least they tell us they got it today, which is big news. But more than the patent, it is the technology. This company has got a technology that should change the way we trade OTC stocks, giving us more transparency, more security, and even eliminating shorting. Have I got your interest? Good. Let's take a look at ticker BEGI. She finished the day, as I said, at 0062 with just over 1.5% gains. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She's got those two green ticks we're always talking about, validated information. This is the only validated information you're normally going to get with the pink. So look for them. This looks good. Looks hot. So what is BEGI all about? Well, I thought about this. The only way to tell you what the company does, we've got to talk about what they're doing. It goes hand in hand. So we're going to flow here from the description right into the news, not in chronological order. It just makes sense better the way I've laid it out. And then we'll come back and look at the peripheral information about the stock. Sound good? Good. I knew you'd agree. So what is Black Star Enterprise about? They tell us here they are a publicly traded merchant banking firm facilitating joint venture capital to early stage revenue companies. They're bringing investors 
two companies. They are being the liaison for the two. Blackstar serves clients in their early corporate life cycles and may provide funding in the form of joint ventures. As Blackstar focuses its merchant banking efforts on blockchain technology, Blackstar plans to gain access to the peer-to-peer -peer digital securities internet trading arena through the Blackstar's digital trading platform, initial BDTP, that is being developed using a private centralized blockchain. Blackstar is developing the BDTP with plans to enable an encrypted digital version of its own current common stock Blackstar electronic fungible shares. <laughs> now, don't let that fungible shares put you off balance. You've heard of NFTs. NFTs are non-fungible tokens. These are fungible shares. What's fungible? It means uh, changeable or not changeable. Non-fungible means it's not interchangeable. One NFT is not equivalent or equal to another NFT. Every single one is individual and unique. Where your shares, like our stock or our money, one dollar bill may have a different serial number on it, but its equivalency, its value is the same. So you and I can exchange dollar bills and nobody loses, nobody gains. That's what fungible means. They're interchangeable with any other share and worth the same. Now, moving into that first piece of news, we had two pieces of news that they showed me over here at the OTC. And we'll start off here so that you get a layout of the uh, formulation of what we're looking at. On the 24th, this is the news that got the stock running and hasn't stopped. Blackstar will receive a patent on its revolutionary digital trading platform a blockchain encrypted infrastructure designed to enable digital assets that are securities to trade on the blockchain. We're talking about our stock that we trade on the market now being able to be traded on the blockchain. And then the news that came out today, the company receives that patent for that new technology. Now jumping into the first piece of news, now that you got a basic idea of what's going on here, this one came out December 21st, and I was serious when I said these are not in chronological order. The company, a developer of a unique blockchain trading system for registered securities using distributed ledger technology and Web3 ecosystem protocols, the short version is blockchain, seeks to revolutionize trading with the company's digital trading platform known as BDTP. Over the past several months, the management team has worked diligently toward an SEC registration for resale of shares of the common stock underlying convertible promissory notes. They filed an S1 a while ago for this resale of shares, which is going to help their debt, basically, in a nutshell. We have continued to present and describe in detail the company's business plan and its proposed novel trading platform while correspondence with regulators continues. From a timing standpoint, we feel this is an exciting time for the company. Our proposed digital trading platform, as currently designed, which utilizes the blockchain, could potentially help resolve multiple existing trading issues, including concerns related to fraud in the U.S. financial markets. Now, I found this next paragraph particularly interesting. Our proposed secure platform offers the ability for the public to initiate trades through their own brokerage accounts with cash for the company's common stock, offering increased security and order flow visibility and prohibiting short selling. First off, they are putting this new technology out there on the blockchain for their own shares. That's initially the door opener. They're going to convert their shares to fungible shares, get them on the blockchain and start to trade them. And you cannot short their shares. They're going to be protected. We're going to be protected. And there's more transparency along with this security, which is going to attract other companies from the OTC who are going to want that and come over here as well. Now, continuing on to the next piece of news, the CEO makes a statement. He says, this may revolutionize blockchain trading of digital assets that are securities, that are stock. When this patent issues in due course at the USPTO, Blackstar will have registered a patent that will give them a 20-year monopoly on digital equity trading of securities on the blockchain. 
20 years, no other company will be able to trade stock on the blockchain except this company. Now it has not been approved yet. They've just gotten a patent. And to that end, I am jumping all the way back here to April. There was an article that was written about the company and they took some leeways and said some things that weren't exactly right and the company wrote a correction about that. And I wanna cover that just so we're clear for us too. The article was written back on April 17th of this year and the headline read, Blockchain Platform for Trading OTC Securities Moves Forward with SEC Approval which was completely inaccurate and could lead readers to believe that the SEC had approved Blackstar's trading platform, which it has not. They go on to tell us the SEC has not, nor it will not, approve it through the current S1 registration statement. Why? Because that's not what the S1 is for. The S1 is to sell these shares underlying these notes. It has nothing to do with the platform. So there was some confusion there. They go on to tell us that Blackstar reiterates that we are not currently registering the platform, nor are we even seeking approval of the SEC for anything other than a registration statement for common shares underlying convertible notes for select note holders. And that's it. So that's what we've got going here, folks. They have a new technology that is going to allow stock to be converted so that it can be traded on the blockchain with more security, more transparency, and no shorting. And they're going to have a monopoly on this for 20 years when and if it gets approved. It sounds hot to me and we could have a front row seat right now. All right, let's go get some information about the relative volume and everything else on this company now. Relative volume, not as much as I was expecting. <laughs> Actually, it's a little less. She's normally doing just under 40,000 shares for the last 30 days. Now, I'm sure if you look, there could be some strong pops in there. They average it all together, so you could miss a day that had 100 million shares. Today, we were down to 35 million. Share structure for BEGI is rather high. EGADS. Outstanding share count is 1.2 billion. The insiders own 52 million. That's nice, but that still leaves us with one point, well, virtually 1.2 billion in the float. It's a real huge float, which does scream reverse split at some point in time. And normally that's when the company starts getting success and they get the price near a penny. Sorry to say. And I haven't read anything, but I haven't done a deep dive. They may have approved one uh, 10 months ago. And they say it's up to the discretion of the management to use anytime they want in the next 12 months. So they wouldn't even warn you. It would just happen. You'd wake up one morning and it would be done because it was approved 10 months ago. So when you get into these companies, you've got to make sure that you know what you're getting into if you're going to hold it for a while. Market cap for the company, we're at 7.5 million. Financials for Black Star, are they making money? Not annually, how about quarterly? No, we got no money coming in, but they do have a balance sheet. Not much money in the bank. We got about $19,000, that's not 19 bucks. They tell us that we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. Total assets. 328,000 and total liabilities. Ooh, about four times that at 1.2 million, which means we are holding a small bag here of $874,000. But you know, every startup company is sitting in debt before they're sitting on the top of the mountain. I'm just saying, <laughs> taking a look at the disclosures for the company. All right, I wanted to point out here, I want to kick this out. You can see all these S1s, S1A, S1A, S1A. The A means it's amended. They had to make a change, something. But there was an original S1 somewhere back, and that was the one they were referring to, that S1 for the underlying shares for the convertible notes. That's the only reason this S1 is in there. It's not about the platform. The platform is the technology. 
that they have received a patent for. Now they've protected it. They can bring it out into the public and it is protected and can't be stolen from them. So I'm presuming that they're going to try to get this up and running now. Why wouldn't they? That's the whole point. All the rest of these filings seem to be their financials and the 8Ks. There's a 8K filed with the financials, so we've got a bunch of those as well. And we've already gone through the news, folks. So let's go take a look at this rip-roaring chart that is now at a buy-the-dip point. We're taking a look at Beggy, ticker B-E-G-I. This is Black Star Enterprise. We're going to chart this company and all the rest on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. So we're looking at Beggy's six-month, four-hour view. We could look at a year, but you're just going to get more straight line like this. She's been flat for a long time. And finally, here in August, she hit the ultimate low that you can go on the open market, triple zero one. When she bounced off that, she didn't get too far. But here, October 24th, when that news came out about them receiving the patent on this new technology, they hadn't gotten it yet. It was a bit speculative, but that didn't matter. Everything changed. All this volume came into the picture. She started ripping and climbing. She started down here at 0003, and she actually went up to 1.3 cents. Now, I told you it went up 2,000%. Well, that was up to where she is now at 006. This is more than double that. So this is over a 4,000% run from October 24th to November 27th. A $100 bill invested here could have been cashed in for over $4,000 up here. She's fallen from that high through these strong SMAs and now she's going sideways. All the SMAs are turning and starting to push down. Now, hopefully when we get to the shorter time frame charts, we're going to see she's not dangling here, but sitting on some strong SMAs. Now, looking at everything, it looks depressive. All these SMAs are turning down. We see red bars coming down. Our, even our volume is dwindling away. Even though it's still considerably stronger right now, it's a lot less than how it started. And all of our oscillators are falling slowly and steadily right now. So I'm going to grab my regression channel to give you a little optimism here. I'm going to poke this day, and you can poke anywhere. You don't have to be anywhere special. Poke that day, and then poke the day you want it to end on today. And that puts a channel exactly where it needs to be. And as you can see, we have been riding up in this channel right here, broke out, came back in, and we just are breaking out right now. Now, the probability is, is that it's going to come back into the channel and work its way back up to the top, which would make this a buying opportunity, buying on the dip. If you believe in this company, if you can look down the road and see a future of trading securities, stocks on the blockchain, if you can see them having a monopoly on this for 20 years, First they get on there, nobody can short their stock. Others hear about it, nobody can short their stocks. Everybody moves over there and no competition for them. This could be big. This could be a buying opportunity, even for a long run. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So we've got a high here of roughly 1.2 cents, down to a low of just over a half a penny bouncing back through that channel, wrestling with the 200, and then coming down and wrestling with the bottom of the channel. And it looks like she's losing the battle here. She looks like she's pushing away. And her oscillators say that is the case. She is still dropping a wee bit more. I hope it's only a wee bit more. Though it could be a better buying opportunity if it comes lower. All right, let's squeeze this up. What do we got here? All right, well, she's kind of going sideways, isn't she? There's our 200. It's not either going up or down. It's just kind of going sideways right now. We've gone from 005 up to 008, and she's sticking right in there. But at this very moment, everything looks like it's pushing down. We're under the 200, under the 50, under the 20, under the 9. You can't climb till you're on top of the 9. Our oscillators, uh, well, there's a little bit of heat down here, believe it or not. Right there, our MACD is on top and climbing. I can't see any real heat in the uh, PPO. It's just going sideways. Our percentage price oscillator 
You read that the same as the MACD. The percentage oscillator uses a percentage of the price, where the MACD uses the whole price. And our RSI is pretty cool. You can see it's just been going zigzaggy sideways, and we're at 47 right now. So the chart doesn't show a lot of heat to explode right now, but it is big news. It has been running. It is at the bottom of its channel. And if you're looking for a company that has a strong potential to explode in the future, this could be it. B-E-G-I. Now here's a stock I found by looking at the charts. This is Power Bridge Technologies, ticker PBTS. Now her chart was an atypical breakout chart. She's already broke out, but she did it very calmly. This wasn't a rocket stock that took off or got real volatile and bounced. She just walked over that 200 like it was a bridge and just kept walking. And over the last 30 days, we've had about 100% gains and she looks pretty good. Well, looking over the news, she's had a rough year. She's a NASDAQ stock. The NASDAQ has a minimum bid price requirement. You got to stay up over a dollar. If you fall under a dollar for too long, they threaten to pull you off the major exchange and toss you down to the OTC. How do you fix it? Well, you just got to get your price back up over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. Well, the company's done that a few times which has gotten them even to hotter water. And they've gotten a letter from the NASDAQ, but at the end of it all, the company comes out on top and it's looking good right now. And we could see a party on the chart. So PBTS, she finished the day at $1.56 and about, oh, 14% gains. As I said, she is on the NASDAQ and trading these penny stocks on the major exchange come with benefits. They're free to trade, no transaction fees. Trade in pre-market, after-market. You can't do that with OTC. A lot more volume on the major exchange and a lot more money. So what is Power Bridge Technologies about? Well, they tell us here that Power Bridge Technologies is a provider of multi-industry technology solutions, software applications, and services for the global trade industry. Internet of Things platform services, as well as intelligent fixtures and devices for smart city operations. Supply chain platforms and social live streaming services for the retail industry. Metaverse and smart solutions for travel and leisure industry, as well as crypto mining and digital asset operations. If it's technology, we're into it. That's their motto. I'm making that up. This company is also in China. You got to keep that as a relevant factor. Chinese companies are great to invest in. They normally have good low floats. Uh, they're normally involved with technology. They're dealing in Asia, China, the biggest populated country in the world. So they can do really, really well with little success. The problem is, is that if anything goes wrong with China, not just our relations with them, but just China, they could yank this stock off the market for a lot of different reasons. So your investment could disappear just like that. So you've always got to keep that in the back of your mind. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Eh, <laughs> not much extra, but it's better than falling, right? We went from 213,000 shares to 242,000 shares. We're pushing in on that quarter million mark. Share structure for the company. Oh, yeah. The company did a reverse split back in June, a 1 in 30. So now we've got ourselves a tremendous low float. Outstanding share count is 1.1 million. Let's call it 1.2. I do not know what the float is, but I know it's never, ever higher than the outstanding share count, right? So we've got ourselves a super duper small float. The company did roughly a quarter million shares today. They've only got 1.1 million in the float, most likely. Well, what if they do 10 million shares tomorrow? You got to sell every share 10 times over in one day. And what if people don't want to sell those shares? What if half of them keep their shares? Now there's only 600,000 shares available to be bought. That's supply and demand. You can get a big rip out of that just like a short squeeze. Now, another thing about that reverse split, that took the price from this real low price. I'm not exactly sure what it was, but it hit just under $14. And then came tumbling all the way back down here, folks, 
to a dollar 56. Now the company has been fighting to stay in compliance. All they needed to do was go over a dollar. Now, of course you don't want to do a reverse split and put yourself on the fence, but they could have gone to $5 or $7. No, they chose $14 and I've got to think there's a reason for that. And we're down here at a dollar 56 market cap for the company. 1.6 million looking at the financials for power bridge. Well, they've been going up and down and isn't that strange. They were making the most money during COVID. Look at that, 26 million and 32 million smack dab in the middle. Before COVID, they were at 20 million. Woo! And after COVID, we're down to 10 and a half million. Whoa! And the profits, though they have fallen abruptly, they're still black. We're still in the black here. Quarterly, probably not gonna get anything. These major exchange stocks don't give us the quarterlies usually. But we do get a balance sheet, cash and cash equivalents. What do they got in the bank? About 9.3 million. Total assets, 130 million. Oh, look at the we liabilities, 27 million. That gives us shareholder equity, positive money for us, the shareholders of $102 million. Take that number, oh boy, take that number and divide the share count into it. And that gives you a rough estimate guesstimate of what the stock price could be based on stockholder equity. Well, let's just make it even 1 million shares for the float, 102 million stockholder equity. Divide that. What's that give you? $10 and 20 cents. I do believe that's right. So this should be $10 and 20 cents based on equity, which is real solid value. And we're at $1.56. Taking a look at those disclosures. We got lots of 6Ks here because they go out of compliance and compliance, out of compliance and compliance. And to that effect, we've got one piece of news which covers it all. This came out December 21st. They list here when they went out of compliance, when they came back in, October 6th. When they went out, November 30th. Now they're back in. Well, during that time on December 15th, a letter came out to them and this one said, we are now looking at you on a one year monitoring scale. And well, to be honest, you've had too many strikes this year. So you're going down to the OTC. Even if you become compliant and do everything we want, you're still going down to the OTC. And that was planned to happen today, right there, December 27th. Well, that's not happened. They're still on the NASDAQ. Why? Because they had the foresight on uh, December 22nd, right there, they appealed it. And what that did is it put them in the system for an appointment for a court date with NASDAQ, which is on March 14th, 2024. What that did was put a stay of execution on the board. NASDAQ can't touch the company for any of this stuff right now unless they do criminal acts, but they could break a lot of the criterias and they can't be thrown down to the OTC. But I'm not looking at it from the negative standpoint. I'm saying they got grace now. They can get things fixed up and fixed up better. And that's the way I'm thinking things are going to go right now. They did a big reverse split there. They pushed the price up to almost $14 to under a buck. And now we are clear down here to $1.56 when the equity itself says the stock is worth over $10. I think it is a value that is being overlooked right now. Let's go take a look at that chart. Back here at Thinkorswim, got everything squared off now. We're looking at PBTS, Power Bridge Technologies. This is a six month, four hour view. Back in May, we had our low of 37 cents. And on June 8th, we had our reverse split, pushing that price all the way up to $13.76. And she kept most of those gains. A lot of these reverse splits fall back at least 50% before they continue falling. This one only fell down to a low of about $10.40, pretty close to that 1020 equity share value we were putting on the stock, right? She did jump all the way up to $12.60, but right here on the 28th, she took a tumble straight down off the ledge and then like Jack and Jill rolled down the hill all the way down here 
scraping across this low of 37 cents. She hit it a couple times right there and then scooted across that and worked her way back up over that 200. And she has just been slowly climbing up not showing any threats anywhere, using this 200 as a solid base. You can see that, folks. Our volume, it's just regular. There's no extra volume here to talk about. Our oscillators are looking very healthy. Our PPO was pushing up away from the pink line. Our MACD is pushing up strong with lots of green bars accumulating, each bar getting bigger. RSI has been climbing, has just crossed the overbought, and is at 70.4 right now. It really looks like a sweet chart. And in case you missed it, our 200-day SMA not only leveled off here, but right now at this very instant, she is starting to turn up. This looks really nice. 20-day, one-hour view. Solid climb. Low bubble in this corner of 61 cents. High bubble in that corner of $1.59 way above the 200 this entire time. Looks like, again, the 50-day SMA is the predominant one that she pays heed to, and she has some volatility here, but she is climbing off of that 50. Oscillators are still looking good. PPO has been climbing for three days. MACD has been climbing as well. RSI is clear up at 66. Looking at our five-day, five-minute taking some stair step jumps here. We dipped underneath the 200, hitting a low of $1.05. Went sideways, and once she got over that 200, she just lit herself on fire. Shooting here up to $1.58, falling back to the 200, giving heed to that, bouncing off of that on our five minute chart. But it looks like she's launching over to the 50 now. She could be ready to climb. The price is getting lighter. She doesn't need as strong an SMA to support her anymore. And even after market, we see she is starting to push up and climb. Volume was picking up at the end of the day. Oscillators all showing heat in the right direction. We got a crossover on our MACD occurring right now. And our RSI just hit about 56. This is looking pretty good. Now, we don't have what you would call a hot catalyst here. But we've got a super low float. There's value sitting on the table. I showed it to you. It's not presumption value. That is extrinsic value. We can weigh it up. It has dimension. We gave it numbers, $10.20, and we're down here at a buck 56. So if you want to watch a stock that has potential just on its own merits without having a hot catalyst, this is one, folks, PBTS. We got another major exchange penny stock for you here. This is Wimmy Hologram Cloud, ticker W-I-M-I, Wimmy. Now, Wimmy's got a chart just like the last company. She's already broke out through her 200 on December 6th, and she's been climbing in a channel nice and steady ever since then. And when it comes to catalysts, well, take your choice. She has got so much news coming out, and every single piece of news is different than the one before, and they're all catalytic. But to understand them, you're going to have to dive into each news press just to see what it is they're talking about. So Wimmy finished the day at 84 cents. She was up over 6% today. And as I said, she is on the major exchange, the NASDAQ. Now, before we go see what the company's about, I do want to tell you that this too is a Chinese company. They don't say China over here, but I'm familiar with the prefix. We use a one here in America before our phone number. They use an 86. So same warning goes here. They may have great technology. They may be doing good things. But at any moment, for any reason, a Chinese stock could disappear. Always keep that in the back of your mind. So what does this company do? Well, they do a lot and they deal with holograms, holographic technologies. So I'm going to read what they do, but I'm going to eliminate the word holographic because they use it in front of every technology that they use. And they got a lot of them. The company is a holographic cloud comprehensive technical solution provider that focuses on professional areas, including, I'll say it once, holographic augmented reality technologies, including AR automotive applications, 3D pulse LiDAR technology, vision semiconductor technology, software development, AR advertising, AR entertainment, ARSDK payment, 
interactive holographic communication, that would be cool, and other holographic AR technologies. So they work with holograms. <laughs> and we're not going to get any deeper than that except the news. The news is really deep, just reading the headlines. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Oh, it dropped going from 827,000 shares down to 706,000 shares today. Share structure for Wimmy? Well, not a bad share structure. Don't know exactly what it is, but we know the outstanding share count is 76 million. Our float, they don't tell us, but it won't be any higher than that. So it could be as high as 76 million, or it could be considerably less. Market cap for the company is pretty decent. It is 60 million. Taking a look at the financials for Wimmy. Let's see what we got here. Ups and downs. Another company that did very strong during COVID. Before COVID, they were at 45 million. They were over 100 million during COVID. And now after COVID, they're down again under 100 million. Just at about 98 million, getting to take home profits of 20 and a half million. Quarterlies, we going to get anything? No, not for over a year. So let's take a look at that balance sheet. Cash and cash equivalents, they got lots of money in the bank, $82 million. Total assets, $181. And another company with little liabilities, $30 million. That gives us $151 million stockholder equity. And they've got, well, we know the outstanding share count is $70 million. You divide that into there, that's what, two? Two. So this should be roughly two bucks, right? You see what I'm showing you here, and that is legitimate. I'm not saying that's the exact price it should be. There's other considerations, but it is a close guesstimate estimate. So this one is under 50% of its true value. Taking a look at the disclosures for Wimmy. We've got a lot of 6Ks here, but nothing since September. So let's just dive on over into that news. This is take two. I'm getting tongue-tied just reading the headlines. The company's got lots of news here. All of the news you see right there is just from this month, and not one of them is about financials. Every single one of them is about a new type of technology. So we're only going to read the headlines, and please forgive me if I stammer a little bit. So we're starting here on December 8th. The company announces augmented reality dynamic image recognition based on deep convolutional neural networks. The company develops holographic complex amplitude computation and update technology. The company announced quantum entanglement routing optimization technology. I don't even know what I'm reading. The company announces asymmetric spectral network algorithm. Okay. The company announces hybrid recurrent neural network architecture based intention recognition for human robot collaboration. It just keeps getting deeper and deeper. On December 20th, the company announces the optimization of artificial neural networks using group intelligence algorithms. The company announces an efficient hologram calculation using the Wavefront recording plan. He gads. Wimmy applied Bitcoin algorithm DHT technology to build decentralized file storage and sharing system. And the last piece of news that came out today, Wimmy built an efficient blockchain compatible heterogeneous computing <laughs> framework. Folks, I don't have a clue what any of these are. It's a deep dive just jumping into one of the news presses. But because I didn't want to feel like a complete idiot, I did dive into this most recent one here. And what they're telling us is, is they, they are improving blockchain. There are these things called nodes, which are in blockchain. There's a certain amount of them and they are the ledger keepers. Every single one of them keeps tabs on everything that's happened. So you can try to trick one node, but you can't trick them all. And they're all backing each other up. Well, all they do is keep information ledgers. Well, now they're making them computational so that they can do tasks, so that they can do more. And that can change the blockchain into ways I can't even imagine. Now I don't feel so stupid, but it took some while to understand that. I did have to read it. 
So you can see they've got a lot going on. Share structure isn't too bad. Revenues need a little help, but the equity again is under. It is below where it should be. We're at 86 cents. It should be near $2 somewhere. Let's go take a look at this chart. Let's take a look now at Wimmy Hologram, ticker W-I-M-I. This is Wimmy's six-month, four-hour view. We got a six-month high back here in May of $1.45. She fell really quick underneath that 200, sat down there for about two months, got up on top of the 200 and sat up there for two months, and then fell. And she's been falling for quite a few months here to a low of 56 cents in November. And off of that, she has changed her trend. Now let's get some perspective here. Let's get a uh, resistance line up here just before she fell. That's right about in that area there. That's right, $1.05. And then we've got one right here. I can definitely see one where she crested the top right there. And let's grab my regression channel and see how she is traveling in this new trend. We're going to poke the low bubble and then we're just going to go to today and see where she sits. Looks like she is breaking out. So let's come in a little closer here and see what we've got going on. She was in a downtrend. Everything was falling. Hit this low bubble. Changed her trend. Got trapped underneath that 200 for a week. Stuck there till she hit the bottom of this channel. And she bounced off of that through the 200 out of the channel. And through every single resistance I just put on the board. All the way up here to $1.11. Before she fell all the way back down to the 200. Nice landing. Bounced up here to $0.88. Cents. Again, falling back to the 200. And while she's doing this, she is changing the trend of the 200 by keeping the price up high. She is tugging that 200 up. And now it has turned up and it is climbing along with the price and all the other SMAs. And as you can see, right now she is trying to break out of this channel. She is not only breaking out, she is testing this resistance. I think she has a strong likelihood of getting over this channel and on top of this resistance and then pushing up to that $1.05. Volume is pretty thin right now. We could use some more of that, but our oscillators are looking pretty good. PPO was pushing up for the last few days. MACD has had a crossover. It's pushing up. There's our green bars. And our RSI has pulled back a little bit, but it's still at 58. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So you can see we are on a steady incline. It's not fast, hard, or furious, but we are sitting on top of the 200, on top of the channel. And between the two, she's bouncing. And right now, she has bounced off of both of them, gotten across the center line, pushed herself up to the top of this channel, and she has had a little bit of pullback right here. She has landed on her nine-day SMA, so she has set up for another attempt. And considering how far she got from down here, I am betting she can break through both the channel and get on top of this resistance. Oscillators, they had a lot of strength, but they're cooling off with these two red bars at the end of the day. But they don't look bad. Our RSI is up there at 59 right now. Taking a look at that five-day, five-minute. We've got some volatility in the chart. We were on the 200 here, banged on it real hard here with a bounce, came down to a low of 71 cents through the bottom of the channel, bounced off of that through the center. You can see how she hung tight to the center of this channel and then shot up through the channel back to the top of the channel. This is looking nice. Then she broke the resistance, showing more eagerness. I still want to climb. I still want to climb. Now, she did lose her footing here. She's fallen all the way back down to 81 cents before bouncing after market, looking like she's trying to recover. We got a mixed bag here. Our oscillators say she wants to recover. You see the curve here? We're on the other side coming up. Our MACD is already turned up and is about ready to do a crossover, though our RSI is pretty cool. That's down there at 44. But I think wimmy has got a lot of technology. They've got a lot of catalysts. They're undervalued, right? We're here at 84 cents and we just saw stockholder equity at 152. So that's at least $2 for this stock. 
It's worth putting on your watch list, folks. When people come to their senses and this starts getting that volume we're looking for, I'll bet you she starts climbing. And when she gets above that dollar five, I'd look for her to make a nice jump. All right, folks, that's the three stocks I've got for you today. Yeah, there were probably some hotter stocks out there, but I can't see them all. I am only human. And again, with that in mind, I may have missed some information. I may have misquoted some information. So please follow behind me doing your own due diligence. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. <laughs>